why we couldn't change the planning committee we were ready to head back to the door at the moment to sign the minutes of the previous planning committee and this is if you wish I sign them as a great record for this thank you I can't use your accent. You must be a full accent. Uh, members in interest, disclosable. Party whipping around. No, 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 no. Sorry, Chair, just on um, application number DA 216 0862, um, further for the haystack. I just want to note that I do live at 76, the haystacks. Um, I know the property well, but you know, I'm a few houses away from the yeah. application. Thank you. Well, any other interest? Don't forget you can do it at the time if you think you have. Party whipping arrangement? No, 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 no. Members of the public, that means members don't get together before we have our party lines to see how they're going to vote. I never will do, I hope. There are no applications withdrawn. And the next thing to do is to tell, tell you a bit of housekeeping. I'm sure you know this, but if the fire alarm rings, please exit the room. Um, the way you come in is the best way. Okay? Please switch your phone to, to silent, which I haven't done. Uh, the proceedings are being recorded. Um, and speakers will have three minutes to um, um, to speak, and after that you'll hear a, a tone which will ask you'll be asked to wind uh, wind up. That is the only opportunity the public do have to speak. So if you could please not interrupt, I'm sure you will join the rest of the debate. Um, don't hiss, clap, boo, or anything like that. I'm sure you're not going to. And during Perhaps when you're talking, you'll see people on the top table here talking, which looks pretty bad manners. We're only trying to get answers from the points that you're making, so you, you may see that, but it's not, it, it looks bad manners, but it isn't really, it's to help the meeting go on. Uh, right, members, applications. The end of the year figure is 80% on uh, being determined on time and 5% major on appeals. We've also got some very important information come in, which Maria will tell you now. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Prime up this afternoon, um, we're regarding the Delta District Council versus um, Weedon Gladsman's case. In the Court of Appeal, just um, this afternoon, Lord Justice has handed down the judgment in, favour, uh, in our favour on all counts. So he's not accepted any of Gladman's points, which means that's quite unlikely that um, the as a side will get leave to appeal to the Supreme Court. So that's pretty very good news. Good news. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So good well done Wheaton. Well done yeah. Devon Tree. Mm. Well done our officers. Well yes, well done officers, legal people, everything. Do we get costs then? Do we yeah, well, don't know anything about that. Solomon, do you know? Yes, <coughs> yes. Um, we will uh, we will put in our application for costs that will be the public judgment. Okay, thank you. Right. Okay, we go to the first application, which is uh, uh, 0715, and is in Creek. Thank you, Chairman. This is a site within the confines of the village of Creton, off the Welford Road. At present, there is an existing dwelling on the site, which is currently in a poor state of repair. The photos will be able to show you these. This is a proposal for the demolishing of this, this building and construction of three new dwellings, so a net increase of two dwellings on the site. The application was revised from four to three, following officers' advice as the site is also within a special landscape area. It is considered the proposal will lead to an environmental improvement to the character and appearance of the locality, including the special landscape area and the edge in, as you enter into the village. Although it does not strictly accord with the whole of policy on one, the environmental improvement in this case is a significant consideration. The landscape officer has no objection to the proposal. 
The siting of the dwellings will not result in loss of privacy or light to the adjoining neighbours, and the overall layout is in keeping with the character of that part of the village. The proposal has enough housing mix, i.e. design, for it not to be in keeping with the village design statement. The application is therefore recommended for approval. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, we have one speaker, Mr. Clark, who's the agent. Yeah, Chairman members, thank you for this opportunity to speak this evening. I'm John Clark, the applicant's planning agent, and next to me is the architect, Stuart Ellis. This application follows extensive pre-application discussions with your planning officers, and also negotiations during the course of the application, which have resulted in the reduction of the number of houses from four to three, and also their reciting. The applicant is pleased that your officers have assessed the proposal and have concluded that it is, it is acceptable in planning terms and are recommending approvals. You will see from the photos already shown and also the three which should be appearing on the screen now that the existing property on the site is an unattractive, dilapidated <coughs> dormer bungalow which occupies a prominent position on the southern edge of the village and visible from the Welford Road. As set, set out in the report and confirmed by your officer this evening, the proposal represents an opportunity for a substantial visual improvement to the site through the removal of the existing property and the construction of three new properties which are well designed. At a low density of development of approximately nine dwellings per hectare, the scheme has been designed and amended, taking into account the building design guidance in the Cretan Village Design Statement, specifically the need for quality in materials and design, the need for the design and proportion of the new houses to complement the zone of the village in which they are to be built, which in this case is Zone 1, which is characterised as a zone of predominantly 20th century development, the need for the development not to be too large in scale and massing for the plot size, and where there are several new buildings permitted on one site, there is a need for variation in design and plan layout to avoid monotonous repetition of one house type. The village design statement states that the buildings in Cretan represent a variety of styles and building materials reflecting <coughs> the changing fashions of vernacular architecture. Your landscape officer has picked up on the need for a, an appropriate relationship <coughs> at the eastern boundary of the site and open countryside beyond. As a result of these comments and discussions, a native hedgerow is proposed to be planted, which represents an opportunity for a better, softer edge to the site than exists at present. The applicant is pleased that your landscape officer has confirmed that the amended scheme provides a far more comfortable relationship to the southern eastern boundary. I would therefore ask that you follow your officer's recommendation and grant planning permission subject to specific conditions for a scheme which represents a golden opportunity for visual improvement to the site and the approach to the village. The architect and I are here and available for any questions should you have any. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Matt. Local member, Councillor Parker. Thank you, Chair. Um, I believe the amended plans, reducing the dwellings from four to three, sits far more comfortably on the site, as four dwellings before seem quite contrived. Uh, I note the Parish Council's comments that these have been addressed in conditions four and seven, the offers is placed on the development. If I could, I would like to amend condition three, which relates to materials, to add materials to give variety to the dwellings, but does not dilute the cohesive nature of the development. This is because, so the three houses do not replicate themselves. Thank you. That's, That's a chair. proposal, is it? That is a proposal, Chair. Right, thank you. Okay. Could you comment on that yes, proposal yeah. before we go to... Um, in, so with the uh, design, as you can see, the um, elevations certainly show different material types. Um, so condition three, I feel, is satisfactory enough. However, we can make a note on the application to make sure there is condition three requires more of a variety of mix 
of materials to be submitted and approved. So it's more an informative than sort of the officer can consider those materials to make sure they are appropriate to be the capped materials of the facility. You're happy with that capped? I'm happy if a note could be placed. I just don't. It's nice to see it like that, but I just like something so it actually does appear like that in real life. Okay. And then falls, it then meets the village design statement as well under material. Right, secondly, do you have a second? I'll take Councillor Frenchman because I've got Councillor Frenchman down to speak next. So. Uh, yes, I was minded, obviously I know the site very well, to, to um, um, uh, second this. Uh, my only concerns are, and I think they've been covered, is one, the Councillor Park has just covered that one, and the other one is, is the uh, boundary treatment because obviously there is a, a substantial view from the other side of the valley across <coughs> and you talk about it, uh, I think the agent just talked about planting a hedgerow uh, around the whole site. Um, so that's potentially up to uh, consideration. I know that sort of the, the southern edge, that edge which is running along this boundary here is proposed to be buffered up. Yeah. Um, it's, it's the return hedge as so, well. Because on the other side you've got the other houses, <coughs> yeah. but on condition four there is a condition regarding landscape. That's, and, uh, I think, yeah, so you're so aware. I would also like it noted that it should be looked at and obviously the height of it needs to be addressed, so it does give some screening to the houses. Yeah, no, uh, I believe our landscape officer has uh, also suggested that the condition is in place, so we can... That's fine. I'm happy to second that then, Chair. Thank you. Right, other speakers, there are other hands. Did they just go up to second? Yes, it was to second. Uh, Councillor Paul, yeah, thank you, uh, Chairman. On um, the negative design, you know, fits well with me. Um, could I just have confirmation that the first floor um, is showing white on the plan? Would, would that be rendering to or um, other material? <coughs> Chairman, it's normally rendering which we've passed, but obviously that's again will be subject to condition three for details to be submitted of that. Um, yeah, I mean that looks a feature to me, and uh, I'm happy with that. Thank you, Councillor Richie. Uh, thank you. Um, on page 18 of our papers, it states very clearly that the proposal conflicts with the requirements for housing in rural areas. Now, I don't actually understand why there is therefore a move to, you know, to override these requirements uh, you know, in this particular case. Um, the, the, the agent um, spoke about fashions of vernacular architecture. My apologies if I didn't quite hear it properly. But it strikes me that looking at these, at these um, sketches, but they look like the same sorts of houses that could be built anywhere in the country, um, including in the sort of estates that are built in many towns for those town dwellers that are more affluent than most. Um, it just strikes me that this is not this is not a necessary development. Um, the the parish council draws attention to the need the need for um, affordable accommodation. And the officers have, of course, noted that, you know, given the size of the development, the, the requirement cannot be insisted upon in this case. But it does strike me that in a place like Crete, you're not very often going to get a development that, to which you can apply the, you know, the percentage that must be provided that is affordable. And it just strikes me that this is not, this is not something that seems to be being built in response to demands for the village. And therefore, that if it doesn't actually comply with the overall planning policies, then what do we have planning policies for? I oppose this. Okay. Um, you want to I'll answer it. Thank you, Chairman. The site is technically within the confines of the village. So we've got HS22 of the uh, development plan, i.e., the same policy from the local plan. We've also got policy R1 which has a number of policies which, yes, broadly speaking, it doesn't 
totally accord with R1, which has been covered within the report. In this particular case, we think or officers consider that the environmental improvement weighs greatly is a significant consideration in determining this application. It doesn't mean that we're giving free flow for all applications to come in and say, you've allowed an application before, but there's good reasons for this. And if you have a look at this plan before on the screen now, you can see this part of Cretan has got a different type of sizes, mix of houses, layouts. So in a sense, this scheme accords with the overall form and character. Now, officers consider the design is appropriate for this location. Again, in this particular location, there's a lot of mix of housing styles. So there's not just one typical vernacular for that particular area. In regards to the affordable housing aspect, <coughs> the site is, or the proposal is for under five houses. So therefore the affordable housing criteria does not kick in. So only for developments which are five houses or more, is that's when the affordable housing threshold kicks in. And Preeton doesn't have a neighbourhood plan, potentially like other authorities or other parishes which potentially have more stipulation about the housing mix. Um, this case is taken on its own merits and officers think overall it is acceptable in planning terms. Thank, thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Robertson. Thank you, Chair. Um, Queen is a nice little village. Um, I know it quite well. Um, I'm looking at the site, lo site and location plan now. Um, the size of the plots here seems to be quite appropriate considering what's around it. They're very, very similar in size, but looks at plot size I'm talking now, not, not particularly properly. Um, the design's nice. I think that's what Cretan wants. Um, and I'm all in favour of it. Thank you. Councillor Wesley. Um, yeah, I, I was a little bit concerned about the stuff on page 18 as well, um, with those, uh, with those articles. And I, what I didn't actually get from reading this, um, I don't know, I have to freely admit, I don't know the site, so I can't think what it, can't think what it looks like. What I didn't get from it really was what are the environmental improvements? I, I, I just didn't understand what they, what they were. Um, the site is as it's existing, is in very much in an overgrown, unkept state. Um, the, the existing property is not of any architectural merit in, in the sense it's in a dilapidated state and it needs a lot of work to it to improve it. And what we've got before is to demolish this run-down property and improve the siting so is that an environmental? Yeah, it's an environmental improvement. So we give preference as a, as a plan authority to dilapidated buildings and people that let their properties run down and um, look horrendous and, so, and then say, well, OK, go and build, go and build houses on the site because it'll be better than what we've got there. No. no. That's Three not, not an appropriate the, and there's a separate bit, so the Town and Country Planning Act, and if, you know, where properties are run down, we have got a section 215 of the Town and Country Planning Act, target notice. I think this is a bit more than tidying up the site. This is fundamentally that it's not um, in keeping with the rest of the area, yes. as well as being in a poor state of repair. Uh, if, um, if you actually look at the overall design, it, it's, it's, it's quite a hot hodgepodge of different alterations, extensions, as you can see on that particular photo particularly, it's got a few flat roofs, um, especially on the sort of where you'd normally expect to see it, <coughs> pretty much a, a pitch than a flat roof, which isn't that appealing. So um, in, in the sense this application tidies up the overall mismatch, hot hotch of overall designs and appearance of, on the side. Okay, the Councillor Thank you. Just picking up a point you're talking about affordable housing, I, I understood that uh, a site that was less than five did make a financial contribution. Mm -hmm. through, yes, through SIL, that's the community infrastructure levy. Mm -hmm. so, so there's not an additional levy for affordable housing? No. no. 
Okay, okay, we've got a proposal that the application be approved, subject to a couple of notes being added about <coughs> um, the screening. It's been seconded. All those in favour, please show. Twelve, those against. Two, twelve, two, the application is approved. Thank you, Chairman. Unlike the previous application, this application is outside the confines of the village. The site comprises of two adjacent pasture fields at the north and the west of the Gelby Top, which is covered by old school beds to the south east and the north to the south west. The fields wrap around the Alpha Primary School, which puts the southern boundary, and I'll see from the site location plan. See the hay farmer joins the site's north and eastern boundary and the other top village hall lies east to the north. The application seeks outline consent for the construction of 50 dwellings with associated open space in the plain area and also includes allocation of land for additional car parking for the other top village hall, for attenuation basins and enhanced footpath connections between the village hall and the other primary school. The report sets out the application. The application was supported by a number of documents, including a community involvement exercise. These documents seek to address the impacts which arise from the proposal. In essence, the proposal will comprise of a sizable new residential development within the open countryside and beyond the village confines. The members are more than familiar with the requirements of policy R1, which sets up a spatial strategy for rural areas. And in this case, officers consider the report that the tests specified for this policy cannot be met. In particular, there are no environmental improvements to be gained from the proposal. And as such, the proposal conflicts with the development plan for this area. Furthermore, you'll see from the report the comments received from the county highways officer, county archaeology assistants, and advanced wildlife <coughs> officers indicate that further information is necessary prior to determination of the application. It is accepted, and you'll see that from the later reps, that the applicant has indicated a willingness to provide the information requested. But to this date, this information has not been forthcoming. Officers therefore consider that the matters relating to highway impacts, archaeology, and ecology have not been adequately addressed. And in regards to policy context and the lack of information to adequately address the impacts cited by the report, officers are not able to support the proposal and therefore recommend the application be refused. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, John. We have a speaker, Mr. Fleet, who's the applicant. <laughs> yes, uh, good evening, councillors, ladies and gentlemen. I am the applicant, uh, landowner Chris Fleet. Firstly, if the committee is minded to approve this application, we are currently in the process of undertaking additional work, which will satisfy and overcome reasons for refusal two, three, and four. And to this end, we've agreed an extension of time until December, and more recently, until February 2017. The application before you this evening has been submitted on the back of the engagement with local residents and the parish council, including an open <coughs> consultation event held at the village hall. The proposal will bring real and significant benefits in the form of A, much needed new homes, B, affordable housing, C, additional car parking for the village hall, D, significant on-site open space, and E, a community woodland facility, which is actually going to be larger than the entire development site. It's been evident to engagement <coughs> local people that new homes are needed in the overtop, as per the recent open village meeting minutes. The approval of this proposed development would meet and identify local needs. The levy on each new home will provide a much needed new bus service, which will be a benefit to the whole village and uh, only go on to improve connectivity and access to local jobs and businesses. At present, only a third of the pupils attending the primary school live within Yelvertop, which means that two thirds travel from elsewhere. This could put the school at risk of closure 
which has again been acknowledged by school governors and the parish council. After discussions with the school governors, it's been established that there is capacity at the school to accommodate any increase in pupil places arising from this development. We propose that this development is needed to ensure local services remain viable. The pub in Yelvertoft is already operating on reduced opening hours. The village shop is at serious risk of closure and many residents have commented on the declining number of services within the village. The increased footfall within Yelvertoft from this development <coughs> would greatly assist in ensuring these local businesses remain open and viable. We have gone to great lengths to ensure the development is well designed. Set back from the road with the existing field boundaries retained, it will provide <coughs> improved connectivity with safe footpath links for the very first time between the primary school and the village hall at the heart of the community. It also um, possesses large areas of open space within the development site and already has a lower density development which is sympathetic to the rural location. In summary, we acknowledge that the rural housing numbers have been met. However, this site would greatly benefit the village and deliver new homes where people have identified the need for stumper homes and bungalows. We have demonstrated through the submission of the sustainability appraisal that the development would engage the exceptional circumstances in policy R1 as it will assist to support the retention of the local services that are under threat. And I commend this for your consideration. Thank you, sir. Um, local member, Councillor Champa. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, members will be quite familiar with this application because it was submitted earlier and withdrawn at the last moment. What I've just heard contains a number of inaccuracies and as does the report, which I think I should draw people's attention to, just to make absolutely clear that everybody understands what it is they're talking about. Uh, firstly, the errors in the report. If you turn to page 28, the paragraph from Fire and Rescue, the last sentence extraordinarily suddenly says, this development in Walgrave will contribute to this collection of <coughs> impact. Clearly, it's not in Walgrave. So one wonders how much uh, uh, credence I can apply to other parts of the report. However, on page 40, the promoting sustainable transport, the second paragraph, the last sentence says, the village is also served by an hourly bus service to Daventry Town. This, of course, is rubbish. We haven't seen a bus in the other for years. The comment from the applicant that this would provide a much needed bus service is not as clean and clear as it sounds. There is no agreement from the providers of the bus service that this service would be suitable or long lasting, persisting. They, they put a limit on uh, what, what might be provided. What this means is that anybody who lives in the Oldtop has to have alternative access to transport. 50 houses in a small village of uh, only 300 houses obviously represents an enormous increase. Um, there is no employment in the Oldtop for these people, so they would have to go elsewhere. There's no bus service, they have to go by car, which is a against the environmental wishes of both the uh, district and the county council. Um, we're told that it might help to save the village school because uh, two thirds of the pupils of the village school don't come from Yelvertop. The reason for that is because Yelvertop is the only school for miles around. So if they stop coming to Yelvertop, where would they go? So I don't find that a very convincing argument either. We're told on page 41 that the proposal has opportunities to improve pedestrian access to the village hall. It says that at the top of the page. It also says it a bit lower down. The proposal also has opportunities to improve pedestrian access to the village hall. <coughs> I don't understand that because it's already an adequate footpath. 
uh, uh, alongside the highway between the uh, village and the village hall. That was part of the uh, project to develop the village hall in the first place. Um, So it's clear, as the officer's report says, lower down on page 41, when judged against the policies in this chapter, it's evident there are adverse impacts arising from this development um, because it's taking away greenfield land. The village hall is not within the community, neither is the parish church. This is not unusual. Uh, communities shuffle backwards and forwards due to various um, outside influences. In this case, it is believed that the original village, which went with the parish church, was effectively wiped out during the plague, and uh, a newer development uh, came elsewhere. It's not true that it was all wiped out. As you know, it's a very old community. It's mentioned in Zoom's book. Um, so I find no merit in this application at all, actually. Um, and again, of course, Chairman, as we all know, it is very much against policy. So I see no, no reason to support it, and I would propose that we accept the officer's advice and refuse the application. Thank you, Councillor Chairman. Uh, can we have a second first, please? Councillor Lopez, thank you. Um, just a simple response. Um, just thank you for pointing out there. Um, I think there is in the report, but just to clarify that we're in the report, we're simply reporting the results of consultation responses. So, ah, well, that's, that, that, that seems more interesting, isn't it? <laughs> I wonder who these people are who imagine they can get us down tree every hour. Well, mm -hmm. we, we will point out more response to those consultations. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Owens, if you second in this, you, yeah. do you want to wish to speak? No, thank you. Uh, and also, it's against policy, it's outside of the confines of the community, which I think is very important. Does any other member wish to speak? If not, we have a proposal the application be refused. That's been seconded. As per officers advised, all those in favour, please show. <coughs> Unanimous. The application is refused. Application is 0780 and is in Abbey Norman. Thank you, Chairman. The site formed part of the Cutting Road in the space known as the Bell and the Little Moors Gate, and the site of South of Hardwick, Pawling Way, and the west of Greater Reservoir. The application seeks to install a steel structure of approximately 5 metres in height. The sculpture depicts a railway waves with a tree form and heralds Downing's rich broadcasting <coughs> heritage. Funding for the sculpture is secured through previous planning consent across the middle and following a community consultation exercise, it was considered the most appropriate type of sculpture was within the bare public open space. You will see from the report that the development plan policy seeks to ensure that new development is of a scale, type and design in keeping the locality and enhance its local distinctiveness. Because the proposed development would assist in defining the public needs of the borough and add to the interest of the media area. The proposal would therefore cause the development plan policy cited in the report. The application is <coughs> supported by the town council, and only two objections have been raised in respect to the development. The objections relate to concerns regarding potential boundaries and antiquated behaviour, impacts on the current use of the space, and safety children who may trip and fall into the structure. So that this concern may be addressed through alternative legislation. Now, in regards to the scale of the development, the risk of children tripping or banging into the sculpture would be low and an insufficient reason to refuse the application. As such, we'll recommend this application be approved, Chairman. Thank you, John. Um, which one is it? Again, Abby, Abby North. <laughs> local member. Yes, you are the local you are the member, or you are one of them. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Carl. Um, yes, I have uh, no objections um, and I would like to go with officers and boys for um, approval. I think some of these sculptures in the right place um, look splendid. You know, we have a, another estate that has just been finalised, which is Monksport, and they have a sculpture there, and I'll, I'll take it, they've 
five metres high flowers in the village green. And it, it really looks splendid. Even in the summer, I yeah. see a group of teenagers just sitting there, not harming anybody. Just, you know, it's just like a, a, a meeting place. Um, and the idea of this sculpture, you know, to reflect uh, back on Daventry and the, uh, you know, the BBC and uh, I think it's a terrific idea, even though the uh, Daventry Town Council has already got one here on the roundabouts here, um, which is a, a, to me, it's only a, it should have been put on the big roundabout down by the icon at probably twice uh, the height, but that's a, a different matter, chair. Um, yeah, I've been in touch with uh, Middlemore Residents Association and they don't see no objections to it. Um, I do know that in the uh, in the report there's two objections from neighbours. Is it where I can find it? Um, one one basically was on the grounds of uh, they could get um, vandalised. Well, Chair, if you go down that road, I'm sure you won't build anything anywhere. And the other objection from the neighbour were that their child or a child might walk into it. I mean, a fire pit is higher, um, we haven't even fought each other, I think the government needs to go spec saying this film. <laughs> so I fully uh, agree with officers and vice chair, I'd like to uh, propose that we go along with officers and vice. Thank you. Do we have a second that? I'll take Councillor Richie because he's another Abbey North man. Oh, right. Right. Thank you. Yes, I, I'm very happy to, to, to second. Um, the feedback that I have had from Little Lord is not just that people have no objection to it, but there are actually people who are quite enthusiastic about it. Um, personally, I would have preferred to have a real tree rather than a metal one, but in spite of the look of it, um, people seem to welcome it, and therefore I have to second. Thank you, Councillor. Right. Anybody else wish to speak? Councillor Paul, yes, you do. Thank you, Chairman. Back, back in the day of Council Chris Knoll, or ex Council Chris Knoll, there was uh, quite an objection to it because of its close proximity <coughs> to one or two houses on that piece of land. Um, first and foremost, can I be assured that it's, you know, it's now moved, so that's fine. Um, however, I would love to see um, some form of signage <coughs> on there um, representing or, or, or explaining that the, the, the waves are in fact radio waves. Um, it is a piece of modern art and I totally agree with the uh, previous two speakers. Um, the, the new site is excellent and uh, happy to go on with that offers of advice. Thank you, Councillor Thorne. Can I clarify those points for you, Chairman? Um, yes, during Councilman Long's day, there was some controversy from uh, particularly the Cypress source, um, because originally the sculpture was built in commission and was going to be placed on the Bellway side, which is over here somewhere. Yeah. Um, and as a result of um, public consultation about the other middle more half work, and it's, that's why the new site has been identified in consultation with all the residents, and that's why it's quite popular um, to be placed there. Thank you, Madam. Oh, yeah, sorry. sorry for you, Chairman. Um, we could explore whether we can put an interpretation or we'll look into that. Oh, yeah, but we have one um, adjacent to the scaffold poles that are on the roundabout here. Um, it would be, uh, would be nice if we could have one. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll look into that. It's not part of the current project, but we'll look into that. Thank you, Councillor Balls. Councillor Patchett. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Jen. Yeah. I, I just want to know if this, this um, piece of artwork was costing. It's been commissioned and paid for by Bellway, the developer of the other site. Mm -hmm. That's. That's. So it's not just. <laughs> uh, I'm just thinking that you know, with, the, with Christmas coming up and people going into food banks. And, uh, no, it's for a 106 agreement. And they they printed it. I know it's tens of thousands of pounds, but that was part of the 106 originally, and it goes on the site. So that's that was for the developer to pay for, and that's the only use it can be used for. Thank you, Councillor. 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 Th
Uh, Catherine Rodrigue Swift. Yes, as it is a piece of art, and um, people will react, like it or dislike it, I think it's important to have a little sign with the uh, artist and an explanation. Yeah. 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 Well, certainly will be looked into. Any other? Oh, I was only going to say, Chair, that uh, we've spoken a lot about this. It's hardly the Angel of the North, is it? Yeah. It's a fairly modest bit of kit. <coughs> and uh, it's all down to personal opinion, whether you like it or not. Um, personally, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> very good comments, Councillor Robinson. Um, if there's nobody wishes to, else wishes to speak, we've got a proposal of the application be approved. Then seconded. All those in favour, please show. Yeah. Those against? Two. <laughs> the application is approved. You can only get a difference in the interpretation of the last. <laughs> Next application is 0859 and is in Abbey South. Thank you, Chairman. The application is about the single story modern building in the southern town centre. It's finished in light coloured brick and green profile sheeting. The building is used as a public toilet, shop mobility facility, and a mess room with car park attendants. Bowen Square lies in the north of the proposed development, down to recreation grounds to the south, and Tesco Superstore car park to the east. We don't propose an extension which would perpendicular to the front elevation of the shop facility unit. We propose rigid eaves hiding by identical to the existing building, desirably with similar appearance to the existing south elevation, and importantly, the extension would allow the increased physics of the shop mobility unit to be accommodated. The proposal will be constructed on an area of public open space, which currently provides a link from the town centre to the recreation ground. At present, there is an open view out of the town centre to the cross recreation ground. The situation of public open space is a mature tree, a street light, and some public seating. These features will not be affected by the proposal. The main issue that's been raised is that the application is, is on an important area, open space, which has an important function in ensuring that the recreation ground remains visually connected to Bowman Square. It's accepted that when viewed from Bowman Square, some visual connectivity would be lost from the but or would be lost, but from all other directions, views of the recreation ground will remain at large, unimpeded by the extension. The building already exists in the street scene, and the proposal would not significantly alter its prominence in the street scene. Overall, the proposal would just be acceptable in scale and design, but viewed in the context of existing buildings, and would still allow an appropriate level of connectivity to be retained between the town centre and the recreation ground. Accordingly, the officer recommend this application be approved, Chairman. Thank you, Chuck. We have a speaker, Mrs. Randall, but I don't believe she's here. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> if not, well, we'll go to local members if she does come, but we'll let her speak. There's two um, from Abbey South, and one of them is Councillor Edmund. I'll go first then. <coughs> Thank you very much. Um, I actually welcome the Partly because um, it's a company or a firm that's been going since the year 2000. And they've grown. They, they, they do a very good service for people with mobility problems. Um, they hire things out. They um, have new ones, people that can, can go there and and try things out and be shown how they're used. Um, they actually have ones in and recycle them and sell them. They have the little place at the end here, I believe some of it's done in there, they call it a pit stop. Um, this is the only place in Daventry District that caters for the people that have no mobility problems. Um, their business is growing. And that just shows that how many people um, need this sort of thing. Um, and I just, it came out a week or so ago that the one in Northampton has actually closed down. Um, so this is the only one for a long, long way around. Um, my fellow councillor on this ward, Councillor Morgan, said perhaps there was somewhere else that would be better for it. 
but uh, everybody knows this place and they can get yeah. into it. If you take it somewhere else or half of it, it's a lot of people aren't going to be able to get to it with their mobility problems. Um, it also says in here that it will block the view of the recreation ground. Well, when you use the pedestrian crossing, all you can see is what was the bowling green and the tennis courts. But every second car, or more than that, that goes along here, turns into Tesco's car park. Now you get just round that corner, and straight in front of you, you've got the recreation ground, and you can see the skateboard, you can see the children's playing areas, and I don't think there's anybody in Dumbledore that doesn't know where the recreation ground is. When I was small, you had to go down Berkeley and Alleyway to get to it, and we always found it. So I'm sure they can now. Um, so it, it will take up a little bit of that square, but I think the benefits that will come out of it, uh, I think we should pass this. I um, propose <coughs> that we accept Thompson's advice. That's a proposal. It is. Do you have a second? I think it was Councillor Osborne that came up next. Um, I've got you down to speak, thanks Councillor Osborne, anyway. So. Um, thank you, Chairman. Yeah, I beg your... No. Sorry, <coughs> Councillor Osborne, there are two local members. I, I do apologise, Councillor Wesley. Um, you go first. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, indeed. Um, <coughs> as usual, slightly difficult on this. I have to say, I agree with a lot of what Councillor Aidan said. You know, it's great service that it provides, but this is uh, this is a little bit of open space. That, that it, and it, I understand what she's saying about the view. It, I mean, it, it's not the greatest of views in the world, and, and it does impinge on it a little bit. But it just stops. It just stops a little bit of free flow around that around that area. And I do think it's a real shame to lose that. Um, notwithstanding the fact that this. Uh, this organisation does provide an excellent service and is, and is, done, is obviously doing very, very well in as much as they, uh, they need to expand. But things do happen in the uh, things do happen in the um, in the field in the recreation realm, and that and this building would impinge on the uh, on the access to it. It does have a, an actual effect when you're actually trying to get around the corner. And it, I just think, it, I just don't see any need for it. I mean, there's, there's, there's other... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry, it's just a very commercial. Continue, Councillor Because it must be a shop next to the mobility shop. No, it's not. Maria, have you finished? No, no, I'm just saying, and I, and I agree with. Uh, I'm not. I'm more in agreement with uh, with Councillor Councillor Morgan on, on this one. And uh, you know, it's not to say that this uh, shop mobility don't do uh, don't do a good job, and uh, it's not to say that people don't need this facility, <laughs> but. You know, I do think um, I do think it's just a shame. You can see that it, it's just going to cut off that corner a little bit. And I know, I just reiterate, it's just like events and things like that. It's difficult enough to actually to get a lot of people through there or anything else. I think you know, going forward, if, if there are more things happening in there, it just spoils it, and, uh, and I just don't see any need for it. And, um, and and I think we should refuse it. I'm afraid. Thank you, Councillor Wesley. Now back to Councillor Osborne. Sorry about that. Thank you, Chairman. Um, just want to say I've used this place, meant uh, that shop many a time, um, and being councillors that know me, <coughs> know me for a long time, I, I've had uh, mobility um, issues over the years, and at one point was in a wheelchair for a couple of couple of years. Um, hiring hiring wheelchairs um, used to be very easy, and mobility things used to be very easy, and used to be a lot around, especially in Northampton. <laughs> they're not anymore. You had some in industrial sites tucked away, um, but now this this is one of the only ones, and it's so difficult to find somewhere. And believe me, I've tried I've tried over the years. I've hired them from them. I've bought other stuff from, from them, and they are brilliant. And I know what you're saying about the corner, but it's it's only a little bit. It's it's not much. It, it's if it, if we were up on about half half of the wreck then understandably, but we're not, we're on about half, tiny little corner bit, 
And I actually think for what they do there and for what they do in the community, I think that it's, it's actually more important that this goes through than, than actually it being refused for the rep. There's going to be other, there'll be other places, and like I say, it's only a tiny little bit that's been taken away, so I'm happy to approve it. <coughs> Thank you, Councillor Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Councillor Bradshaw. Thank you. I, just a quick question is why they don't build it on that bit of grass? It's not the shop. No, the shop's up the other end. Oh, that's not part of it, then? No, not the shop. Oh, right. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was all one, build, one building for yeah, one use. It's already toilet in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. um, if I might clarify, the building itself is actually on at least two. Damage area community transport. It's actually got the building itself and the land it sits on. Up to that point there, it's owned by Dutch District Council. And that the piece of the proposed extension is also Dutch District Council owned land. So we're going to charge them more <laughs> under the lease. I'll expect this too. <laughs> Councillor Chandler. Uh, you, Councillor Ritchie next. Sorry, before yeah. Councillor Chandler, I'll kill Bob. <laughs> I think we are unanimous in agreeing that this, this, this place provides a valuable service. And, you know, everybody wants the service to continue. It, it is important to, to many people in Daventry. But I do question whether the service, if it needs extra space, has got to be provided from the site. Um, I agree that, you know, when you look at it there, this is designed an open paved area um, for pedestrians move backwards and forwards. They're not just moving backwards and forwards there through to the recreation ground. And frankly, I don't attach a great deal of value to the, um, you know, the scenic value of the, of the recreation ground. But it is looking through into a green area. It, it is also the way in which a lot of people um, go to that, that, that particular side of the car park, um, people who are going backwards and forwards with children and so on. I just, I just think <coughs> that you know that is changing the character of that particular bit of the town centre. Um, I'm therefore inclined to go along with the town council in you know saying that it shouldn't be there. Um, surely, if the land is there, if, if, if the place belongs to us, um, can we not do everything we possibly can to find to find other premises? Um, premises in a place perhaps closer to shops and shopping areas that would that would provide them with the space that we actually need. Um, it just strikes me as while it is, you know, the you know the business is very, very worthy, but I don't see that that necessarily justifies um, putting up a building which, you know, they might not want to renew the lease, and that building is therefore going to be there until such time as we you know, we decide we shouldn't have done it and we want to pull it down. So I just feel that we shouldn't be going ahead with this in the first place. Uh, if, I, if I might clarify for you, Chairman, that's the shop mobility building, and what they want the extension for relates directly to the shop mobility part of the Downtree Area Community Transport Service. The actual, they ha actually have their offices over at the Abbey. So it's not, you know, their, their administration side, if you like, for the rest of their operation, which is the uh, volunteer drivers and coordinating the minibuses, is elsewhere. It's not, that is a very central location. It's a town centre being adjacent to the major car parks and the bus stop. So, I mean, that's, ultimately, the application before you is that DAC would like to extend the shop mobility building because what they want the extra for is directly relating to the shop mobility, to the wheelchair, scooter requirements. That's the application before you. Um, that's what you have to make a judgment on it, um, from, from a planning point of view. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Chancellor, no? Thank you, Chair. <coughs> I'm not de going to declare an interest, but it must be obvious to you all that I am quite interested in this application. Um, I just thought I should point out that the fact that the shop mobility and what's growing with it, which is the opportunity to uh, repair and maintain people's own uh, wheelchairs and mobility aids, uh, is an essential need within Daventry Town 
particularly when you consider that at the moment, if I want to get my wheelchair re repaired, I have to go either to Leicester or Corby. Mm -hmm. uh, and that seems to me rather unfortunate. I, I can't see that the addition of this extension, which is not humongous, uh, can be objected to on the grounds that it looks awful, um, takes over the whole area, which it clearly doesn't. Um, I can't see that trying to relocate this facility altogether would be a, a, a good positive move because A, it's very convenient to areas of Daventry which are, trans you can get across them in a wheelchair. Uh, there are some areas in Daventry where there are shops which you can't, actually can't get. Um, the, from this point, you can obviously get to the Tesco Superstore, you can cross the road to Bowen Square, that gives you access through Foundry Walk or Foundry Court, whatever it's called, I'm sorry I'm not a local resident, uh, to other facilities that people need. People know it's there, it's, it's a central sort of hub, and uh, I think that uh, those of us who are in need of such facilities welcome this application. Thank you, Councillor Chapman. Councillor Paul. Thank you, Chairman. Um, what we're talking about, roughly 26 feet by 20 feet, um, to match the existing um, on an area which, yes, it is used by one or two pedestrians. By days, holidays, and bonfire nights, you might get a hundred people there. Um, but yes, it is a busy thoroughfare, sometimes during the weekend or if something's going on in the wreck. I certainly don't have a problem with it. Um, one of the speakers mentioned uh, the lease, um, and quite honestly, uh, with my other hat on, um, if uh, the lease expires or if they go away, uh, I wouldn't have a problem of letting that tomorrow uh, within the drop of a hat. So it's, it wouldn't be a liability on the council. One of the concerns that I have, the previous, uh, or one of the previous applications was for a piece of art. I refer to it as art because I thought it was simplistic and beautiful. But one of the major pieces of art that used to sit just in front of that sign, which is on the uh, screen there, where the cursor is going round, used to be Churwell. <laughs> now Churwell was a lovely steam engine, which was taken away for renovation. But where has it gone? I don't not know. But I'm going to find out now, because it just reminded me. <laughs> and that was a beautiful piece of... Uh, art and, and, and it, it was the character of Daventry. Daventry has an ethos for um, uh, environmental uh, services, we led on environmental services. <coughs> we will also have the ethos that we care about our um, less able residents. The old area is flat, Councillor Chancellor already said that, it's in the centre of town, ideal situation. I have no problem whatsoever, Chairman, of uh, agreeing with officer advice. Thank you. Find that train, Mr. Fraser. Councillor Paul? Yep. Okay. I'm going to. Councillor wants to come back and then Councillor Carl. Uh, yes, please. You had a picture up there just now, Marie, about the street scene taken from the crossing. Yeah, that's just before Google Earth broke, that's That's before Google Earth went into shops yeah. and broke. So. <laughs> right, can yeah. we go back one or two then? Right, that'll do. Um, I, I just wanted to point out that the building's over there, you've got that, you've got the toilets in the middle. We're told that it will stop the flow of people. In fact, town council says accessibility for pedestrians and coach stock. The coaches are this way. Nobody ever goes over that side to go to the coaches. The only people that go around that side of that tree are they going to that or they're going to the public toilets. 
Um, in fact, you can't even get into the wreck there because you've got the little fence. You've got to come this side. And the, the, sh the picture that showed from the road, um, with that tree where it is, you'll hardly be able to see the building. So you can't say that it's going to stick out like a sore thumb because it's going to be behind the tree. But it's just that nobody walks around that side much. They walk around the other side. Yeah. Unless you go into the mobility or the toilet, you don't go across there. So it's not blocking anybody's way. Thank you, Councillor Evan. Um, Councillor Carr, then I think we can get to yes. the boat. Councillor mm -hmm. Carr. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just noted in the, uh, the uh, landscape planning officer's report, there's no mention about those two trees there at the side. Do they have to be removed? Well, so the building's not coming that far, then, like no, I say. That's a tree there, Jim. It's roughly 26 feet by 20 feet. Those trees look a lot nearer than that. That's another bit more in Sherman, and that's where the trees are, and that's where the... It's an end on extension, it isn't a side extension. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Right, we have a... If you can say what you wish to say in a couple of minutes, we just want you to play a report on this one now. Um, we'll allow you to still speak. Um, we're just about to get us a vote of it. Um, so it's, you, you can go now. Right. Thank you. Um, yes, we've looked at this. It is in a conservation area. We feel there's often anti-social behaviour um, in the wreck that is monitored by CCTV and we feel with the extension that that will uh, block off some of that view and it will actually spawn... Sorry? No, no, just... No, just let, Kat, uh, let Mrs Randall have a three minutes. Yeah, because since the uh, bowling green has gone, obviously it's opened up all that space, which actually looks like, you know, really nice now. We just feel it totally block it off, and it will ruin the street scene, and it's just, it's not in the right location. If they want to extend um, the shop, it will be better extended somewhere else. Okay. You wish to say anything else? No, that's all, thank you. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry, but it's backwards. We've had the debate before you no, 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 got no, a chance no, to no, speak, no, but at least you've had a chance to speak. But we have a proposal that the application be approved. We should have seconded it. All those in favour, please show. Those against? 11 3. The application is approved. On the condition that we find Sherlock. <laughs> oh yes, we find that train. What happens to the train? Yeah. Well, I'm going to find it. You'll do that for it. It's all right. 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 The next application is 0862, going down the Green Hill Ward. Thank you, Chairman. The site is located within the Lang Farm Estate within Dublin Tree. This is an application for a front side single storey extension and the conversion of the existing garage. The proposal will lead to the loss of the parking area to the front. However, this area is not <coughs> being used for parking as you can see by the photos and in addition it doesn't meet the current standards for the local highway authority. However, the local highway authority do, does object on the basis of lack of parking. However, because it's not used for <coughs> there's existing on-street car parking by this property as existing. It is considered a proposal is in keeping with the character of the locality and will not result in a detrimental impact on the neighbouring properties through a lot of light, a lot of privacy. <coughs> Therefore, the application is recommended for approval. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Catherine. Um, do we have a speaker or not? No, no speaker. Um, local member, which is Councillor Paul, by the way. Yeah, thank you, uh, Chairman. I was quite amused by that photo. Um, if you go back a couple, it looks as if they've got an outside toilet. Um, however, um, as garages, well, it's on that screen, Chairman, don't mm. laugh. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see, I mean, pretty mock comp. However, um, I've yet to find a garage built in recent years that can actually fit a car into. Um, 
I have no problem with this. I would uh, propose that we go with Officer Rivers. Mm -hmm. That's a proposal. Yes. Thank you. Do you have a seconder? <coughs> Councillor Hedden yeah. next to you. Okay. Would you wish to speak? No, no, I'm fine. I agree with what you said. Okay. Does anyone else wish to speak? Councillor Khan. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, uh, <coughs> as I mentioned earlier, I do live on the uh, haystacks myself further down. Um, but I know this area quite well. Um, I do hate to see uh, garage conversions taking place, uh, made into living quarters. Um, but this, this property is sort of tucked away. And it, I can't see any problems with really parking because there's plenty of parking space, which is very unusual for a land farm, um, opposite this property. Um, by the way, that toilet has been there most of the year, but I have been walking past it. Um, yes, Chair, I can't see any, any real problems with it because even if, if, if you turn it down, say, like a parking space, um, there's no laws or we won't be able to uphold the law to make anybody park their car in the garage. Unfortunately, if you drive along the haystacks, most people leave the cars on the driveway. Um, but not in the garage. But not in the garage. Well, that's right, they can't get in there. They use it for storage uh, 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 reasons. Just a point of interest for everybody. It's not enough to do with black matter because I know somebody who actually had their car taken off the drive after telling the insurance that it was garaged of a night. The insurance, <coughs> yeah, so it's just a point, a point of interest, uh, Chair. Yeah, well, you obviously get discounts. Um, yeah, Chair, so I've got no objection to this. I mean, it's a sort of quiet cul-de-sac long road there at the bottom. I can't understand the highways when reading that. It, it seems to make out or reflect that it's coming onto a main road. That's the way I, I, I read it, Chair. But, uh, yeah, we've got no objections at all, Chair. Thank you very much. Councillor Osborne. It's okay, Chairman, don't, don't wish to speak now. I'm sort of a picture I wanted to see. Sorry, thank you. I said it's okay, Chairman, I don't want to speak to you. Thank you. I saw the photo I wanted to see for parking opposite. Right, please. I've got three more speakers Councillor Frenchman, Councillor Ritchie, and Councillor Councillor Irving Swift. Councillor Frenchman next. Thank you, Chair. I'm just sticking in the groove of previous applications that I'm appalled by the quality of the information we were given in terms of the drawings. And also the fact that the plan that was su supplied on online uh, highlights number 37. They didn't have the decency to highlight their own uh, property on it. And I think it is beholden to officers to make sure that the information we're given is of a correct standard and a correct, uh, I call it density, but so they're readable by everybody. And to have a hand drawn that looks like it's been done by a three-year-old, I think is totally unacceptable. Officers, no, I'm sure you know that comment anyway. Yeah, we know that comment. However, we also have to set plans which are considered to be accurate um, and are measured um, which this, these drawings were. Um, not everybody has to employ an architect. They can do the drawings themselves, provided it shows exactly what's going on, which in this particular case, maybe it's just, I, I think, I believe it just hasn't scanned in as well, so, it? so it needs to be done to a standard that's scannable, doesn't it? That should be a, a, a basic objective of the plans. Well, m maybe we can investigate that and make sure that sort of, we try and scan in, in the drawings as <coughs> best as we can. No, it's up to the applicant to provide drawings that will scan. That's not part of our local report. Well, perhaps it should be looked at. Because of computers, the use of computers. I mean, through you, Chairman, we have to behave reasonably, and if the applicant's intention is clear, we don't really have much choice but to validate the application. Would you concur with that, Simon? Um, well, I mean, it's really a matter of your own policy, but ultimately, you don't want to prevent people from putting in planning applications. Um, but I do accept against the French that equally you need to be able to have sufficient information for you to make a decision. I'm sure after making that point, Councillor Frenchman, officers will be looking out for things that are perhaps not as clear as they should be. 
Pastor Richie. Uh, thank you. I, I can't plan to say anything about this application this evening, but just looking at these photographs, um, that carriage looks, and, 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 and what is assumed behind it, looks more or less <coughs> the same as mine. Um, if that is going to be used as uh, for residential accommodation, what happens to all the stuff in the jungle that is inside it? And I just think that there has got to be something that, remember, you know, the people who are going to live here um, aren't signing up that they're going to live here for life. And as they move on, um, supposing everybody went down this particular route, you have an estate of houses that are of two or three bedrooms that suddenly become houses of three, four, or five bedrooms. Um, the affordability of many of these houses then becomes something that is called into question. The density in the area. Do we have any control over that? Are there any policies that we've got to, you know, to make sure that everybody doesn't decide that they are going to that they are going to build on every bit of garage or backyard that they've got? Uh, yeah, the application is on its own merits, um, so we've got to consider that. However, if you're sort of concerned about displacing sort of paraphernalia in the sense of the front of the property or with the rear where it gets to the amenity issue, there are powers to enforce which uh, which has already been mentioned this evening. Number three, sir. Is there, you know, are we right to have a concern <coughs> about changing what would be good in the long term? Might be the density of the population in the area <coughs> and of the type of housing. Um, if we if we found that while every application is decided um, individually, if ever you know, if everybody went down the same route, we could change the nature of the estate. Well, well yes, you have, and that's called over the road. If you felt. You have to do it on each application on its merits, but if you felt you could argue it on this case, potentially, I suppose, that a given development constitutes overdevelopment in that area, that, that would be a justified reason for it. Uh, really, Chairman, I think some, some of your concerns relate to the fact that, that, <coughs> that by adding more accommodation space within the property, more people might live there. We do have and through environmental health and through housing, we do have powers to... If a three-storey building, they couldn't use it as a housing multiple occupation with a husband's in and so on. If it's overcrowded, we can take action, the police can take action. So that's really covered through other legislation. And similarly, the quality of the build is within the trial. So there are other sanctions as well. Thank you. Yes, um, on page 73, it is, it is noted that the conversion of the existing garage to living space can be carried out as public development without the need of, to apply for planning permission. So we have discussed now for 10 minutes. That is a relevant point, and it's in front of us just because uh, I weigh objective. So we can, uh, I think uh, we should read the paper a bit more, and. Um, stick to planning reasons. Thank you. That's a very good point. Right. To, to, to clarify for the members, mm. the existing garage is going to be converted to extended living accommodation, and then another garage is going to be built. It, no, it's, 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 not, it's a single story, single yeah, story extension. extension. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But we, we debated about garages, and mm. that can be transformed. Yeah. Yeah. So we should always stick to planning reasons. Thank you. Councillor Paul. Yeah, thank you. Um, I find myself almost sitting in with uh, Councillor Frenchman. Um, if we go back to the photo <coughs> of the side <coughs> elevation, um, something that I didn't notice on there, there, <coughs> there are one, two, three, four industrial size air conditioning units. Um, I'm slightly confused by an out of that side there's four out of units on that side. 
I'm sure that would probably be in the way of the extension. Anyway. Just an observation, Chairman. I, I, I thought, well, Perhaps Councillor Carr has got his finger in the air can tell it for it. Um, Basically, Chair, the reason being is, I mean, everybody on the state here knows that the uh, gentleman who resides at that property um, is an air conditioning, uh, what would you call him, Chris? Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. His, uh, his job, yeah. So uh, he'll have good air conditioning so he's probably got a for his house. Yeah. 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 So that's why he's installed. So there you are, Councillor Paul, there's the answer. So is he playing business rates right, then? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I think the TV engineer has got a great big TV as well. Councillor Carr, quick one. Yeah, if we could just ask for a point of clarification because I've been asked a question. Um, if a property has a garage and the obviously driveway in front to get to that garage, is that classed as two parking spaces? Yeah. So basically, you'll be losing two parking spaces. But given the size of the, the, the garage and most of the garages they tend to be used to garages because it's not a bit of modern day car. Hence why the local highway authority has also changed their uh, size of the garages to try and accommodate modern cars. Um, as all mentioned in the report, that the existing driveway doesn't even afford parking space to the front of that garage. It doesn't meet that criteria either. So when we talk about one and a half garages, that's what they mean. <laughs> right, good point. I think we get to the vote. Uh, we have a proposal on the application to be approved, which has been seconded. All those in favour, please show. Those against? Nobody against? Well, just two abstentions. One abstention. One abstention. Thank you, the application is approved. The last, but not least, application 0946 in Killsby. Thank you. Thank you. I've brought to all members' attention to the very late representation of the Killsby Parish Council. Great representations advise the parish council not to consult in revision to the application. Um, had that been the case, officer would sought to defer the application. However, evidence was presented at the chairman's briefing to demonstrate the parish council, as were the neighbours, were consulted on the 4th of November. And as such, the application is before you tonight. The application site lies in the southeast corner of the village. The southern boundary is adjacent to the M45. The A361 lies adjacent to the western edge, and the northern boundary is shared with existing residential development. Open countryside extends to the east and south beyond the application site and the M45. The site benefits from outlying plan consent, which has established, which established the principal development and access arrangements for the site. This consent is seeking approval, seeking approval with provision of 40 units, including 34 market housing units and 14 affordable units. The layout provides an area of open space along the A361 frontage, which will to be the mix of designs of the traditional vernacular. The layout itself has been dictated by the physical constraints of the site and the need to provide flood attenuation measures. These flood attenuation measures, as you can see from the location plan, are appropriately located at the northwest corner, which is the lowest part of the site. Provision of human or gas storage tanks towards the frontage also allows the supply to be provided and refilled to the first phase of the development without inconvenience or obstruction to the remainder of the site. Communal provision would also reduce the number of traffic movements associated with refueling, allow greater immediate space for the proposed properties, and also allow a low cost of supply to be negotiated. This current reserve matters application seeks to overcome the reasons for refusal of the previous reserve matters submission, which was accused for by the council for the following reasons. The council considers that by reason of the layout, landscape and appearance, <coughs> the proposed development lacks visual connectivity with the rest of the village, such that it would not blend well within the site and with its surroundings and would not reinforce local distinctiveness or enhance the appearance of the village, contributions of the development plan and the Kilsby neighbourhood development plan. 
Once again, it's reminded that outline approval to establish a principle of residential development on the site. It also set up details to access the circuit development and associated traffic calming measures and the pedestrian crossing on the A361 in the need of the application site. It's worth noting that the previous reason for refusal of the reserve matters application to not refer to the access arrangements or the traffic calming measures. Accordingly, members are advised that these details are fixed and cannot be revisited in the council's consideration of the current application, which seeks permission in respect to the detailed layout, landscaping, scale, and appearance of the residential <coughs> units. The application then will force be determined in respect to the layout, scale, landscape, and appearance to only have regard to the council's previous reason for refusal and in particular the layout, landscape, appearance and visual connectivity to the rest of the village. In that respect, the revised application sought to overcome the reasons for refusal by amending the layout of the frontage of the dwellings that being moved closer to the A361 and onto the landscape if I remove all existing and proposed vegetation from the site frontage as requested by the Parish Council in its previous representation in <coughs> to open and use the site from the A361. It's important to add that the applicants have indicated a willingness to retain some trees which is specified by members if it's for their families it's appropriate to do so. Officers consider that these revisions demonstrate the terms that the site can be developed in the form which does not detract from the means of the locality by reason of its layout, design, overall scale. Furthermore, the detailed design and the layout of development takes account of local building traditions and materials, and it's the scale and height and layout which combines well blend with the surroundings. Accordingly, it demonstrates compliance with the development plan and appeals to the neighbourhood plan, and addresses the reasons which were cited in the previous refusal. The application is supported by a landscape master plan, which, is, which in principle demonstrates an approach to landscape treatment to address the previous reasons for refusal, which were expressed by the Parish Council. Um, this approach is at odds with comments of the local residents opposite, who have expressed a preference to see parties be retained or reinforced. Of the site should be fully exposed in the manner currently suggested by the Parish Council, and to consider that full details should be secured to demonstrate in detail the amount of existing plant that's been obtained, what is to be lost, and what placement part planting is proposed. In respect to the housing mix and tenure, to consider the amended scheme has addressed concerns regard and, and is now compliant with the joint cause strategy as well as the Kills the Neighbourhood Plan. It should be noted this mix was accepted by the Council when considering the previous reserve matters, and therefore, again, cannot be revisited under this reserve matters application. Also, have regards to the comments of the Parish Council requesting a footpath and cycling along the eastern side of A361 towards Malton or Close, to consider this request is both unnecessary and cannot be secured. The Council accepted the issue of visual pedestrian connectivity at outline stage, when it approved the means of access and associated highway works including the pedestrian revision the A361 would be <coughs> pedestrian connectivity to remain with the village. Furthermore, the local highway authority can the cycle pedestrian route as now sought by the parish council could not be provided on the east side as there is insufficient space. Local highway authority reiterates that the existing access and the pedestrian access provision is acceptable in respect to this development. It's of utmost importance tonight that in members' consideration of this revised application that new reasons for refusal are not introduced where they were previously considered to be acceptable. Nor should matters already approved be revisited. To do so would result in substantial risk of costs being warned against the Council. Overall, the subject to compliance the conditions set out within the outline stage and those set out within an officer's report before you tonight. Officers consider the proposal represents a sustainable form of development which complies with the development plan and should be approved. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chair. We have three speakers. First of all, Mr. Mandeville, who is against the application. Good evening. Thank you very much for your time. Um, I actually reside next door to this proposed plot, uh, 25 Morton Hall Close or Morton Hall House. We've lived there for 20 years. Um, we were surrounded by, on the left, field, the top of our property, field, and to the right, where the proposed site is supposed to be going, field. Um, two or three years ago, to cut a very long story short, we had problems with the pedestrians walking their dogs around our property. I lost one sheep, I had three or four chickens killed, and had numerous arguments with the public. The corporate farmer owns all the land around us, 
uh, apart from the new building uh, proposed site, um, put in a main gate by the A5 roundabout to stop pedestrians using his fields and grain fields as a walking area for their dogs. My main problem is we have gone to great length over six years to build one of the biggest catcheries in the county. I have a very good reputation. It's very, very quiet. It was chosen exactly where it is in location for that reason, just for quietness and tranquility for its guests. We also have a grooming parlour for dogs in our courtyard, which is not so quiet. But both have been given permission by the council to operate fully under licence. I would like to suggest and ask proposed developers, in fairness to ourselves, that we have secure fencing all along the right hand side of our property, which is, as you look at that diagram now, where the proposed site is, the top line right up to where it goes across, dropping down. I would like fencing to put, stop people using that gate, which is obviously a fire gate, I presume, to get into the field or whatever, if there is any problems. That that secure fencing and all our property has secure fencing as well, because I can see problems coming with people walking their dogs, getting into the field again, disturbing our animals, sheep, ponies, whatever. We have peacocks as well, which is annoying for residents. I don't want to argue with people who are buying these houses because our rural way of life is annoying them. I want to make this known first because it's. I understand where the home people are coming from, and I don't object to development, but I do object to my life being disturbed by having rows with people because they weren't made aware of what is around them. My main concern, as I said, is fire risk. <coughs> if children get in that field, play with fires, it will be a blaze in the summer. We don't have the facility for putting out major fires. The whole catchment is wood. We have fire extinguishers in there, we have staff, we have alarms. All I'm trying to do is protect what we own. I don't want any profit or gain out of it. I just want a peaceful building development. And if I could ask the council, and secondly, if they'd be kind enough to put uh, a condition that our borderline trees are not touched. We have 13 high-growing trees, conifers, which stop the motorway noise, it stops the cattery noise going elsewhere, and it also stops any noise that we make, and vice versa if there is going to be a development on the other side of us. Finally, we do have a natural ditch which is running from the top of our property, from the field, all the way down our property to the proposed development site. It cannot be seen as a ditch, but in torrential rain, which we have had in the last two or three years, it is more than serving to save our property being flooded on the right hand side, bottom of our property. This picture, particular picture here you're looking at now, I've already gone to the expense of if this site Could is you wind up now, please? Sir. Sorry? Could you wind up, please? You've yes, I will. Time. I've already gone to great expense in putting 120 foot of fencing in already at my own expense. All I'm asking is if you can put condition in where the houses are, if they could do the same, please. Thank you, sir. Um, next speaker is Mrs. Camp from the Parish Council. Good evening. Uh, yeah, my name is Catherine Camp. I'm the clerk <coughs> to Gilsby <Kielsen coughs> Parish Council. I know that you've had this application before, you on a number of occasions, and the members of the Parish Council and residents of Gilsby have been to speak um, about the reserve matters before. But I just want to take the opportunity to remind you that Gilsby has an adopted neighbourhood plan. It's been put together with the help of planning consultants recommended by this council. It's been scrutinised by an independent inspector and it's been approved at a referendum. And within that neighbourhood plan, obviously there are a number of policies which I want to remind you of. Policy K2 supports walking and cycling in Kilsgore and it states that proposals to improve accessibility for walking and cycling and enhancement of routes linking residential areas to community facilities and the village centre will be supported. Policy K3 supports new housing in the village, but it states that residential development should provide safe access and it should be accessible to local facilities by walking and cycling. Also, Policy K6 seeks to protect the character, form and setting of Gillsbury Village. 
The amended application before you has done nothing to address pedestrian safety with regarding to crossing the A361. And um, although our bank homes have informed the parish council they've carried out a traffic survey, they haven't made it public yet. Um, the archaeological assessment of the site was excavated down to the medieval ground level and it uncovered an important series of finds including well-preserved remains of 11th century longhouses and a series of ditches which mark the original boundary of Kilsby. These findings um, aroused great interest amongst village residents and over 100 people visited the archaeological team during an open morning to see the discoveries. A technical report from the archaeological consultants is still awaited and Abbott Homes have declared that they're unwilling to discuss options for managing heritage aspects in their development in advance of their plans being approved. I ask that since this application doesn't improve connectivity to the village and has no indication within it that the archaeological, archaeological heritage found on the site is to be recognised, that a decision is delayed until further details are put forward, which will help this application conform to Killsby's neighbourhood plan. But I do ask, if you are minded to approve it, would it be possible to include a condition which ensures that some information about the archaeology, the archaeology can be put on display on the site? It's not already in the uh, condition, as I know. And I just, it's the last point, um, but again, the main reason why the parish council wanted to take up, thought that the um, houses should be obvious when you drive into the village is to try and make drivers realise that they're going into a residential area when they come down the A361 from Daventry. So that was the reason about moving the houses slightly forward and taking away their hedgerow. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Dwan, who's the agent? Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak. I'm Chris Wong, planning manager of Matt Holmes, the applicant. Through this resubmission, it has been our aim to actively respond to the previous reason for refusal stipulated by members. As you have heard, the reason for refusal related to visual connectivity of the scheme to the village. We have accordingly proposed a revised layout whereby the development frontage has been brought forward by circa five metres closer to Daventry Road. We also, in response to the previous request by the Parish Council, are now proposing the removal of all the existing vegetation in the front of the site to ensure the scheme appears more visually open on the approach to the village. In addition to this, we have updated the appearance of the frontages of key plots one and three to make them more in keeping with the established village design character. It should be noted that the layout proposed has been highly constrained by the need to provide surface water attenuation basin and also the communal LPG storage area at the front of the site. From a technical perspective, there are no alternatives available to this. Given this, there is no possibility of bringing the proposed for, uh, plot frontages any closer to Daventry Road than currently proposed. The development site will form a notable function, in any case, in the approach to and from the southern side of the village, as it will act as a transition site whereby the rural character becomes a village fringe within the street scene. <coughs> With this in mind, the attenuation and LPG storage areas at the front actually act as a positive in that they provide frontage open space, a design aspect that characterises other key entry access routes into the village itself, as detailed in pages 20 and 21 of the design and access statement that supported the application. From this regard, our proposal, uh, proposed layout actually mirrors the established built form seen directly opposite where the houses facing the site are set back with an area of immunity open space uh, located at the junction of Daventry Road and the banks. Given the site constraints and the aforementioned design merits, we consider the proposed scheme solution is absolutely appropriate in this instance. Access and highways were fixed as part of the outline approval prior to our involvement with the site. They cannot be reconsidered as part of any reserve matters application and did not form part of the reasons for the previous refusal. That said, we are aware of the concerns of the parish in this regard and we have voluntarily approached NCC highways to establish whether we can provide any betterment over and above the existing approval in relation to access design. From this end, we have managed to secure principal agreement with um, North Amsterdam County Council for some additional traffic safety measures to be incorporated as part of this reserve matters application. These measures include repeater signs and additional flashing speed signs. We are open to such additional features forming part of the condition of this approval should it be granted, 
so that members in the parish can be assured that these measures will be provided. We know that the parish council have maintained their objection on grounds of connectivity, mix and access. To be clear, the access solution is already established by the outline approval with the scheme mix already confirmed by this committee. With regards to connectivity, for the reasons we've already detailed, there is no opportunity to bring the scheme frontage any further towards Daventry Road, over and above that now proposed, with the design response reflecting key village design characteristics in any case. Given the site parameters, the technical constraints, and the changes we have proposed, we would very much welcome your support in backing this opposite of recommendation and approving our reserve matter scheme in this instance. Thank you, sir. I'll just come back to a number of issues which have been raised before members start consideration of the application. Um, I noticed that um, this account has very made significant reference to the Kilsby Neighbourhood Plan. Um, I must point out that this outline consent was granted prior to the Kilsby Neighbourhood Plan. Um, in, and in terms of pedestrian connectivity, that has already been established on the outline application. Um, furthermore, this Pedestrian connectivity was not a reason for refusal, which was cited in the previous reserve matters application. So I don't feel that you know it is of any benefit for members to revisit that. And certainly to revisit a point which has already already been approved would would raise significant risk costs. Um, furthermore, there was an additional issue raised regarding archaeology. Yes, there, there there has been a lot of archaeological work carried out on the site. And that archaeological work is carried out as a result of a condition on the outline. In fact, condition 17 um, refers, refers to um, requires applicant to carry out archaeological work, provide a written scheme of investigation, and also provide some recording of any fines as well to the county council. So, and so yes, there, there, have, there is some archaeological fines there, but they are being dealt with within the outline application under condition 17. Thank, Thank you, Karen. We've got two local members. Who's going first? Wayne's first or Matt first? I don't think there's anybody else. Yes, she yes. came a little while ago. Okay, so I'll match you up. You go first. Thank you, Chairman. I'm going to address the fact that heads this time for <laughs> change. Um, I have to agree 100% with the clerk, the parish council. This has been the most difficult. Uh, application. This is the fourth time of asking and Kilsby have had to fight every inch of the way for everything that they have managed to get, which is very little indeed. I'm not very impressed by uh, what the applicants have said tonight about uh, the speed signs and so on, repeater signs and so on. We know that there are lorries going down that, down that road at over 40 miles an hour and up the road at over 40 miles an hour and there are not adequate provision made. And okay, you've already decided that that's okay. It doesn't matter about that. It doesn't cut any ice. But I'm afraid that what the applicants have um, uh, managed to um, uh, give towards the village has been very little indeed. And I don't think you've got any choice but to approve the application, but it's with a great deal of sadness that I, that I shall hear your decision. <coughs> Thank you, Councillor Lamar. Councillor Robinson. No, thank you, Chair. <coughs> again, I agree with what uh, Councillor Lomax has just said, and I do also agree that I don't think there's very much we're going to be able to do about it. Um, they've tried a little, a little bit to improve the uh, connectivity and a little bit to improve road safety. It is a dangerous stretch of road, there's no doubt about that. Uh, however, this has been imposed on us anyway. And um, although I'm against it, per se, I cannot <coughs> see a way of, 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 uh, of us taking any further action except one that one minor point that the neighbour made about the fencing along the uh, boundary there with him. And I don't know whether that can be taken care of. We'll find out straight away. If I just come back to that, um, Claire, obviously there is actually a condition, and condition A sets out um, that the price of occupation dwellings from Fox Central to 22, which to the northern side of the boundary, um, that there are details provided regarding the boundary treatments 
um, in terms of the design, materials, and the type of, and the type of screening as well. That should address that concern. Okay. Um, Councillor Osborne. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I happen to agree with uh, um, Councillor Omax, um, both, uh, both local members. Um, they've had a difficult time with um, applications coming forward, um, and this has been at the forefront. <coughs> um, I'm afraid we have got our hands tied. Um, there's, there's, nothing that, there's nothing that we could actually review this on which is a shame um, because I do, I do think that more could have been done to this application if it was to go through, but there you go. I definitely won't be um, uh, voting for it. Councillor okay. Irving Swift. Yes, um, Catherine Lomax uh, said something that is uh, quite stunning in, in a way. Uh, that the developer didn't seem to have engaged enough. So I hope that the developer, we all know that you need to make money. But if you could rescue a bit of goodwill towards the village, uh, it might be a good idea. So that's all. It's a season of goodwill is starting next month. So maybe uh, you could uh, try, and, and the parish should engage with you to see if they can get something a bit more out of you. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you. Otherwise, I agree, we have our hand tied, so yeah. I will go with the officer advice because Are I do you, not want... It's a proposal. It's a proposal, and because I do not want the council to be at risk of... Right. Before uh, I go to Councillor Ritchie, do we have a second for that? Councillor Olga. Um, could you like to speak now, Councillor Olga? I think I can speak okay. Councillor Ritchie. Um, can I begin, Chair, with a question? The outline planning permission was granted, um, what, a couple of years ago, certainly before the, the neighbourhood plan uh, was, was, was passed and approved. Um, that means the outline planning permission is there, but does it not also mean that any plans, that any detailed plans that follow have got to be consistent insofar as they can be with the with, with the neighbourhood plan. In opposition to the application is consistent with the neighbourhood plan. The concerns raised by the parish council relate to pedestrian connectivity. Well, I... I if, if, if I could finish, mm, please, Councillor mm. Chief. And that predates the, the neighbourhood plan. However, that has been <coughs> approved. It cannot be revisited. It has been already approved by this authority subject to independent highway advice at the time, which the authority has accepted. Well, my second question. Um, you know, I recall the discussion that we had on this, on this, this, this particular um, application when we, when we refused it on the grounds of connectivity. Um, during that discussion, there were a lot of other things that were raised um, arguing that the, that the application was not consistent with the plan. I recall raising the, you know, the mix of properties, something that the parish council has raised. Um, I would have much, been much happier um, if, we had, if we had acted on the basis of the mix of properties rather than the issues of connectivity. But is it the case that because we, because we rejected an application um, on, for one reason, that then that is considered to have been um, accepting the plan for all other reasons? If that is the case, if that is the case, I much regret that at no time <coughs> the new member of this committee that Emily had pointed out to me, because that certainly would not have been my intention. It is, yeah, that, that, that's been, I, th I think that is very unfortunate the way that this, this, this matter has been handled. Can, can I clarify two points that might assist Councillor Richie? Well, I, I don't think they'll assist me, but they might, might at least inform me on this issue. Um, in relation to issues such as co connectivity, those should have been dealt with if they were concerns at the outline stage. Now, I appreciate the difficulty was that when the outline was approved, um, the neighbourhood plan was not in place. 
Um, but those kind of issues go to the principle of the development and whether that connectivity is in place to justify that development in that location, etc. When you deal with a reserved matters application, there are a spe specified range of reserved matters. Connectivity does not neatly sit into any one of those. So that's why that is a difficulty. When it comes to approving or refusing um, an application for reserved matters, you must look at all of the reserved matters issues based on the application that was submitted to you. If you have concerns with them, um, that are sufficient to refuse it, you will, you will set those out in your reasons for refusal. There was just this one, largely this one principal issue brought forward by, by Councillor Robertson on the last occasion, and that's been brought forward into the reasons for refusal. So to then start adding other ones now places you in a real difficulty. So it's not so much the neighbourhood plan that's, that's at stake here, it is your previous decision. You understand that, Councillor Richard? Um, so in I, future, I, I, if you refuse something for a particular reason and the application comes back, you can't then use another reason. Um, you can only deal with the reason that it's been refused for in the first place. I understand the predicament that we're in. Mm -hmm. yes. Now that's the predicament that we're always in. Yeah. Um, that's not just on this application, that's on any application. But, but, but Chair, with respect, I think that this, this, this committee clearly has created this situation. Um, uh, that, that there was an approval of permission, I don't know whether back in 2014, at that stage I wasn't clearly on this committee, I wasn't the councillor at the time. But, um, you know, a plan, an outline plan, was clearly approved at that stage. And now I accept complicity in, for my ignorance at the time of the last the last meeting we had, in not making sure that, if you like, the <coughs> a stake was not put through the heart of this particular aspect of the application. Thank you. Right, who will we got down to speak now? Councillor Fletcher. Thank you. Just on that point, I think at the time we didn't have a five-year land supply, which was really the major bone of contention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think on today's policy, we wouldn't probably have allowed this site at all. Um, just on the point I wanted to make, on page 87 it talks about the, the bottom half, it talks about the housing mix. I'm a little confused by this, so I have a technical question. The, the housing mix is obviously market housing and uh, uh, social housing, so it has two sections to it. I think saying that there is a mix, a suitable mix of housing that takes into account both camps is actually untrue because I might want a small house but I wouldn't want I would be eligible for a uh, affordable house so on this site there is actually no mix of housing market housing which are the ones that are for sale apart from it appears to be four and five bedroom property <coughs> so I would like to suggest that the mix is not adequate for this site because all you've got is large houses. The social houses are not for sale and can't, wouldn't be bought by other villagers wishing to downsize their properties. John, would you like to ask? Um, first and foremost, I just want to address the concerns by the housing mix. There are also eight three-bedroom properties as part of the market housing mix as well. Um, but also, you know. Got to remember that in the previous reason for refusal, that this is <coughs> the identical housing mix which members considered. There was not a reason for refusal presented on the housing mix. In actual fact, <coughs> I recall that Councillor Robertson said that he was happy with the proposed housing mix in his proposition. Um, and the proposition presented was that the proposal lacked a visual connectivity rather than pedestrian connectivity with the remainder of the village. Once again, I must emphasise that in considering the previous reserve matters application, members did not seek to refuse the proposal on the house of mix of the design of the buildings, nor pedestrian connectivity. And as such, members have accepted that those particular elements are considered to be acceptable to the local authority. These can now not be introduced as elements of reasons for refusing the current application. 
Thank you. If I could just come back to yeah. the second chair. I, I fully accept what you're saying, but I think it is disingenuous of officers to say that there is a suitable housing mix on any application where you take into account the affordable housing as part of a suitable housing mix because it's two different elements and there needs to be a suitable mix of market housing for those who can afford to, to buy a smaller house. So I'd just like to make that point for future reference, please. But what the officer is saying, the fact that we didn't... I agree with that. We, we didn't yes, say that I said for future on, yeah. applications. And, and just for clarity, our planning policy colleagues um, have a key role in determining whether this is policy compliant in terms of the housing mix, and they are, their comments indicate that they are happy with that. But it's contrary to the neighbourhood plan, and it will be to many parish councils' neighbourhood plans. Thank you. Right. I was just going to say that um, basically what Sean said is quite correct. I did argue that um, I felt that uh, the housing mix was as much to do with the developer's commercial uh, requirements for this site as, as well as our own consideration. And I remember Councillor Ritchie arguing sort of the opposite, if you like, but nonetheless, I was happy with the housing mix. I was happy to allow the developer to suggest a housing mix. <coughs> Thank you, Councillor Olson. Councillor Carter. <coughs> Thank you, Chair. Um, just trying to take in all the views from the previous council, what he said in that. Um, sort of mentions that we're, we're fighting this with our hands tied behind yeah, our back. Okay. Um, it just bewilders me that why has this been brought back to planning if we're not allowed to do anything about it? Yeah, I'm totally confused. We can give you a call. Arch for that. Through you, Chairman, the scheme delegation says, I mean, most reserve matters, uh, I think it's fair to say, are up for the sub decisions. But the scheme delegation makes it very clear that if the parish council gives plenty of reasons to object to an application, it comes to committee. So that's what's for you. Well, at the end of the day, it's all a bit pointless, isn't it? No, no, okay. It might seem like that, but it is important if it's meant so that the parish council can have an input and just to go to straight to delegation. They've, they've come along here tonight and they've had an input. Okay, they're in, but may not get very far because of the circumstances of the application, but at least they've had an input. Right, we've got a proposal then that the application is. Sorry, Councillor Evans. Did you want to speak? Yeah, you said I could. I do apologise. Adam says yes, I was right. We can, we can. That's right. Um, this one you scored from anyway, but I'm just hoping that um, gentlemen over there will listen. Um, I zoomed in on this the other day on the plan um, because I wanted to close the look. And because some of these things are so tiny you can't read them. And I found a little box that says BCP. And it turns out this is a bin collection point. There's two on here. Um, where the road finishes, I take it the road is going to be quite the same as the road. So perhaps the bin lorry won't go down there. The top. But, yeah, there's, there's one at the top and one at the bottom. Now, where these little boxes are BCP, I take it people have got to take their bins to there. If that's the case, the, the one at the top, where the road isn't finished, there'll be nine bins, and the one down the bottom, there'll be six. Now, the one at the top looks as though it is at the side of the house, although I wouldn't want that many bins standing inside my house waiting for the dust lorry to come. Because, and some of them will stand there all day because people will be out at work and won't let them. The one down the bottom is actually on what looks like a piece of grass right in front of somebody's front window, and I wouldn't want them there either. So I'm asking a gentleman, if I've got this right, and I know that somebody will correct me if I'm wrong, is there anywhere else we can put these? Because I wouldn't want to think that there was those many people, sorry, those many people standing near people's houses. We'll find out for you. Um, in this case, we'll ask the <coughs> applicant and uh, tell us, is what the councillor is saying correct or not? Well, they're being collected points. They are being collected points. 
Well, why is one of Taraji folks on the window? Down the bottom on um, yeah. bottom number 37. Yeah. Okay, just there. Through you, Chairman, I think that if, if, if that, this is a point which we can dissolve under, through a condition, quite mm -hmm. frankly. Um, big collection points really are to, is because this is where the, the main main highway actually ends. Yeah. If we look at plot 31, for instance, there, there's a, a green strip across the side of there, yes. and equally, you know, a bin collection point could be also appropriately located on that side as well, mm -hmm. to the side of that property, which would be obscuring any views that's on the front of the property. Mm -hmm. um, and if, if members felt that was necessary, I'm sure we could seek further details mm -hmm. of, um, of waste collection points um, mm -hmm. as a further condition mm -hmm. on, sure on the application. <laughs> Would you be happy, Councillor Adam, if officers mm -hmm. negotiated with the applicants to find to perhaps a more suitable yeah. Um, I, place, would, I'm sorry. Uh, I would like them to um, negotiate, and I'd like to think that there would be some other place found to put them, so they're not like. So well, the applicant so is here, and, it, the, uh, uh, and, and they're not in the head, so it looks as if well, the, <laughs> themselves and the planners are going to be talking. Okay. Right. Yeah. We have a proposal <coughs> then that the application be approved. Okay. Gentlemen, uh, and it's been seconded. All those in favour? Is that the of the extra condition of the points, the points? Yes. Yes, yes. 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 Okay, all those in favour, please show. Yes. Those against? Can I be limited, please, Chair? What? My, my yeah, I'm going to go. Can you limit the people that are against? The application is approved subject to um, the um, one of the